Son number two said he would go, but he didn't. Now we don't know. We don't know why he didn't. But the thing we know is that he didn't go. And maybe you've heard the cliche, actions speak louder than words. Has anybody been there? Has anybody ever been in the position of son number two? Where you said you would, but you didn't. You made a commitment, but didn't follow through. That's when guilt comes in and chains you up. The devil is right away at your side. You said you'd do it, you didn't do it. What is it? It's a lie. But the devil will say, it's just a little lie. Don't worry about it. You made a commitment, but nobody cares. Don't sweat. And then, the lie is exposed. The commitment is revealed that you didn't do it. Then the devil changes his tune. Oh my goodness. You really messed up. You blew the opportunity. You can never make it up. Never forget, folks. Guilt is a debt we can never repay. But conviction, conviction drives us to confession, repentance, and forgiveness. Guilt will say, you screwed up. You can never make up for it. You can never go back to the vineyard and actually work. Conviction says, you know what? It's almost the end of the day. The vineyard still needs some work. Get over there. Make good on your commitment. Get rid of the guilt. Guilt comes in and you're painted into a corner. Application. Is it time to follow through on something that you said you'd do that you haven't done? Is it time to make good on a commitment that maybe you forgot about? Or maybe you're feeling guilt about, but you don't even need, you feel you can't go back because it's too late, it's not too late. Let's finish up. With the obvious answer to a very painful question, we'll be reading in verses 31 and 32. Which of the two sons did what his father wanted? Jesus asked. The first they answered. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prophets are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For Jar came to show you the way of righteousness. You did not believe it, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent or believe it. Don't like your freedom. If you know the truth, guilt can be a double forever out together, feeding off of each other constantly. Jesus peels off the parable player's masks to reveal who they actually are. The religious folks of Jesus' day had heard the truth from Jesus' lips. They heard that, and at that point they could have made a decision. But then they also saw other people hearing the truth and believing Jesus and changing their lives. Was it guilt? that made them say, oh, we heard the truth and we didn't respond. It's too late. Was it pride that said, look at those tax collectors and prostitutes. Look at them responding to Jesus. We're not like them. We don't want to be associated with them. Whatever they need, we don't. Guilt and pride will both them together. Guilt-free tendencies. What are they? When you mess up and you make a wrong decision, do you change your mind? Can you change your mind? And does a change in your mind result in change actions and behaviors? This is a guilt-free tendency. Another one. When you say you'll do the right thing, do you actually do it? 
We can't just be sayers of the word. We need to be doers. All right. Finally, but on a much deeper level, have you heard the truth of Jesus Christ? Have you heard the truth of Jesus Christ? And have you seen the truth of Jesus Christ in other people? And have fallen into the double water of his saying, No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Faith in Christ is just for the weak, for the confused. I've been religious all my life. Religion has nothing to do with it. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. There may be some here this morning who has struggled for a long time with the reality that they have been religious all their life, but they've never actually begun a relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't tell you why, but I can tell you this is not too late. There may be some here who are under conviction even now about something that they said they would do and they didn't do it. There may be some here who have said, I will do it or I won't do it. And they're, and they're dealing with guilt because their words and their actions haven't matched. If that's you this morning, if you're looking to find that relationship with Jesus, or you're looking to have the strength and the courage to do what you know needs to be done, I would like to pray for you right now. Let's pray for you. Oh God. No matter which son we are this morning, I pray that we would not only be sayers, but also doers of the word. Oh God, we know that this is a, a parable of which is worse. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to stand up and be like neither of these two sons. But when you call us, we respond and say, yes, Lord, yes, Father. To whatever it may be, and I pray for those right now, who have never made a commitment to Christ. I pray that they would say yes, Lord. I pray that they would admit they need you and they need your forgiveness. I pray that they would believe that you are who you said you were, the Messiah, the chosen one, who takes away the sins of the earth. And I pray that they would commit their lives to you and to live in for you each and every day. For those who are under conviction now, or things that they need to change in their lives, Lord, I pray that you would help them and give them what they need to do what they need to do. God, you know the heart of each person here. You know commitments left on them, words left unsaid. God, will you help each of us? to rely on you, to give us the strength to do what is right. We ask all this in the strong name of Jesus.